All right, so this video is going to be covering uh, the first part of chapter four from Bauman, uh, section on microscopy. During the three YouTube videos from chapter four, we'll cover some of the fundamental concepts of microscopy. Then we'll spend some time talking about the different types of microscopes available for vi viewing organisms. And then finally, we'll spend some time talking about mechanisms that we can use to add contrast to specimens, which will allow us to be able to observe things under the microscope. Uh, as always, we start off the chapter with a set of learning goals, which uh, might the things that we want to be able to accomplish. We can see that these learning goals uh, pretty well cover the breadth of chapter four. We want to know this in a lot of detail. To uh, start off, we want to uh, reinforce and, and review the, the units of measurement as used with, my, with the metric system. The basic unit of length in the metric system is the meter, but that's not a particularly useful unit for speaking about microorganisms. Most microorganisms are not going to be visible uh, by the naked eye, and consequently, meter is really not a particularly useful unit. Uh, the main units that we're going to want to use as we uh, uh, as we talk about the metric system, are going to be these ones down here. The micrometer, which is equivalent to one millionth of a meter, and the nanometer, which is equal to one billionth of a meter. When we speak about microorganisms that we view under the microscope, uh, cells are going to be uh, measured in using the micrometer. If we start talking about viruses and organelles, uh, some of the topics of chapter three, uh, nanometers are going to be the appropriate unit for measurement. Now, the human eye is actually a very good instrument for being able to make observations with. and We can see uh, objects, biological objects, uh, from the largest cells to uh, organisms down to approximately uh, two-tenths of a millimeter. Uh, the limit of resolution of the naked eye is going to be equal to about 0.2 millimeters or 200 micrometers which is going to be right about here this large protozoan euglena is just barely visible by the best human eyes for things that are smaller than the limit of resolution of the human eye smaller than this number right here 200 micrometers uh, we want to use a microscope and the compound light microscopes such as we have in the microbiology lab are going to be able to see organisms that are significantly smaller than this 200 micrometer uh, limit. And in fact, the light microscope is going to be able to see uh, things that are down to 200 nanometers or 0.2 micrometers. This number here is the limit of resolution of the light microscope. And that'll be down to things that are right about on the right hand side of this red line. For the things that are smaller than that, we of course can't use the light microscope anymore. It's not going to be able to resolve that small of an object. Uh, fortunately, we have available to us the electron microscope. The electron microscope is going to be able to see objects that are down to about 0.1 nanometers uh, in diameter. That's going to be right down to uh, about this point. Uh, the smallest biological objects, amino acids, uh, nucleic acids, proteins, uh, organelles, viruses, all pretty easy to see using uh, the different types of electron microscopy that we have available to us. So our limits of resolution that we'll want to know are the limited resolution of the human eye, approximately 200 micrometers. Uh, the limit of resolution of the compound light microscope, about 200 nanometers. And the limit of resolution of the electron microscope, uh, about 0.1 nanometers, or roughly about a thousand fold difference between each of these different objects that we have for viewing things. When we speak about the principles of microscopy, there's really three concepts that we need to be able to understand before we proceed. Uh, the concept of magnification, the idea of resolution, and then finally, the uh, idea of contrast. Contrast is going to be the topic of a later YouTube video from Chapter 4. Well, magnification is actually a very simple concept, and I think lots of us have a very good understanding of what magnification is to begin with. Uh, 
simply put, magnification is the uh, change in the apparent size of an object. Things appear bigger than they do normally. Uh, and magnification is able to occur because light can be refracted or it can be bent. We can see this demonstrated here in this cartoon in the upper left, where light moves from light, or from an air, into glass. And when it goes through this air to glass transition, it's bent very slightly. We can see this demonstrated down here with a microorganism. The light bouncing off the surface of the microorganism passes into a glass lens. The glass lens, because of its surfaces, bends the light. And what we see, what ultimately hits the human eye, is a larger object. Here's something bigger. So magnification, simply put, is uh, how much bigger something appears. All right, so the second concept, resolution, and probably intrinsically feels kind of the same as magnification. Uh, however, with the compound light microscope, we run into a problem if we magnify things sufficiently large enough. And it, it appears at about the time when we magnify something that is smaller than that limit of resolution that we spoke about already at 200 nanometers in diameter. Here we see a, a cartoon. This is something, that, a picture that I grabbed that I have manipulated in Photoshop simply by grabbing the one corner here and dragging it to make it bigger. And although we've magnified this image here, it's, it appears bigger. Uh, if we look at it very closely, we actually can't see any clear detail along the surface of this microorganism. We've made it bigger, but there is no gain in the information that we can get from looking at this image. More details not apparent from this larger uh, magnification image. So we've magnified things without any apparent increase in resolution. This magnification without increase in resolution is what is known as empty magnification, where we magnify things without any increase in resolution. Now, I've got another copy of this picture that we saw in the previous slide. It's, it looks like it here at low magnification, essentially the same picture, but in Photoshop I have uh, manipulated so that there are more pixels, more information density in this smaller image, and we enlarge it, and now we've made it larger, and now we can see incredibly clear detail along the surface and the interior of this microorganism. Uh, just compare, look at this upper left hand picture, the smaller one. They essentially look the same between the two pictures, but the larger one it has much more detail in the enlarged image. And so we have an increase in magnification with a concurrent increase in resolution. So resolution is how clear something appears when it is magnified here it appears when magnified. And if an image becomes magnified and still does not remain this increase in clarity, we refer to that as a loss of resolution. Well, resolution turns out to be related to the properties of whatever it is that's illuminating the object that we want to see, that we want to magnify. Uh, since we're using the compound light microscope, uh, the properties of resolution are going to be dictated by the wavelength of the light that we use to light up our specimen. So up here on the top, we can see the familiar spectrum of visible light, this spectrum of red to purple visible light is just one small part of the total spectrum of electromagnetic radiation with extremely long wavelengths over here, radio waves and television, and extremely short wavelength of radiation down here with gamma rays. And we can sort of see a little cartoon which uh, shows us the uh, relationship between wavelength as we uh, decrease. Uh, there's a formula, resolution, and wavelength are related to one another by properties of the lenses that we use to view and magnify the specimens. We, we learned about this uh, formula initially in, in the laboratory section where resolution is going to be equal to wavelength divided by these numbers down here which is, are, are essentially constants. The numerical aperture of the condenser lens and the numerical aperture 
of the objective lens. These are numbers that we have to actually look up and read off of the, the sides of our microscope lenses. Wavelength is going to be the light that's coming from the light bulb. And if we are using a standard compound light microscope with a white light bulb, uh, the wavelength of the light is going to be approximately 500 nanometers, or roughly right here in the middle. And the reason that we pick 500 nanometers, we say that it's 500 nanometers, it's because it's the average of all of these wavelengths up here. Uh, if you can guess by this, that as the wavelength goes down, the number over here, the resolution is going to go down as well. And so we can actually have an, a better resolution uh, with our microscope, a more clear image, if we make this number get smaller and smaller. So actually, if we built a microscope and we used 400 nanometer light instead of 500 nanometer light, this number would be smaller. We would actually be able to see a more clear image, a more highly resolved image. Now, of course, if we keep on lowering the wavelength, ultimately, we're going to, instead of having purple light, we're going to have ultraviolet light, which is no longer visible to the human eye. And so ultimately, with the light microscope, uh, this number right about here represents a barrier. If we go any lower than that, we won't be able to have better resolution because we'll have light that the human eye is unable to see. All right, so the third concept is contrast, and we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the types of microscopes that we can use to be able to increase contrast. We need to increase contrast because most biological materials that we might want to look at, cells and microorganisms, actually have no color in them. They're, they're transparent. Consequently, with the light microscope, they're not going to be visible at all. You know, we have uh, certain kinds of microscopes that we can use uh, that will actually increase the contrast by taking uh, advantage of some of the distinct properties of light. Uh, alternatively, we can add chemicals to the specimen, which will also increase contrast. The problem with that approach is that many times the chemicals that we might add to uh, the specimen in order to increase the contrast are toxic, and so they may kill the microorganism that we want to look at. And so, uh, depending on what we want to do with our specimen after we've had the opportunity to look at it under the microscope, we may choose to add chemicals to increase the contrast and stain the specimen, or we may want to play with some of the properties of our light microscope and be able to use a different type of microscopy, maintaining the, the, the specimen living and being able to recover it after we're done. So there's a number of different types of microscopes that are discussed in this chapter in Bauman. There are the, are the light microscopes, and we'll talk about the different types of light microscopes that we can use. And then there are the electron microscopes talk about the different kinds of electron microscopes that are available. Within a clinical microbiology laboratory, all types of light microscopy are actually used, and a fair amount of electron microscopy is also used as well. Uh, Bauman also spent some time talking about probe microscopy, two different kinds, scanning, tunneling, and atomic force microscopy. And Bio 230, we're not going to be responsible for these probe microscopes, mainly because they're, they don't have wide use in the clinical microbiology laboratory at all. Huge, 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 huge use in research microbiology, but within a clinical setting, we're simply not going to run into these. And so consequently, we will not be responsible for probe microscopy during this course. Uh, light microscopy, yes, we're going to spend a lot of time talking and using that. Electron microscopy, we won't have the opportunity to actually see in Bio 230, but most people are going to come into contact with some of the principles of electron microscopy as they go through clinicals.